Hi, in this video, I want to talk to you about a one model approach, a single integrated financial model for different stakeholders. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Herie. I made financial modeling my profession as well as my passion. So if you're interested, please consider subscribing. All right, the topic that I want to talk to you today is this one single model approach. So as you know, the financial model is a tool that we use throughout the due diligence of a project. So what I'm focusing on is mainly project finance. I just wanted to note that. So as you see throughout this, sometimes it's very long for project, depending on projects, you know, a project by project, technology, different technology. However, there is a kind of a due diligence process that you know, every project needs to go through in order to get all the approvals, to sign all the contract. And throughout this process, there is this uh, document called the financial model, which is mainly up to now, it's Excel based. And this model accompanies all the stakeholders lenders, sponsors, contractors, the government side. It is just going along with them throughout this process. Just wanted to bring your attention to this very interesting concept, you know, by uh, one of my favorite authors uh, in the field of project finance, uh, Professor Yeskambe. And I really recommend his book here. I put it here is uh, this book. I carry it everywhere with me, Project Finance by Professor Yeskambe. Like it's just the Bible and it's written very in a very simple you know, way. It's understandable for everyone and it covers everything, all the aspects of project finance. And there is the other book that I also also carry it's a, it's a very bulky book but I also carry it everywhere with me it's from professor Edward Bartmer and his corporate and project finance modeling so that was just a side note about the two references that I use so um, this uh, financial model is as we said is used by the different stakeholders how do the sponsors use it the sponsor the sponsors they use it to evaluate the return from their perspective the lenders they they're they, they are using it to understand the bankability of the project whether the project is um can repay the debt as you as you know a project finance the only uh, kind of um, asset is the future cash flow, is the projection. So you don't have any other collateral to to you know to, to have you know in the future. So uh, so yeah, so that's why it's very important to go through the projections. So that's what the lenders are looking for. There might be the governments involved if it's a project, you know, if it's a PPP or it's if it's uh, anyhow the government is involved. You also need to the government also look at the model from their perspective to understand how much taxes will be collected if they also have to pay for a service that the um, private sector is providing how much will they have to pay and how much will they collect in taxes so a financial model is basically a tool that collects you know these different points of view should actually reflect this different point of views so the aim here, the, what I want to tell you is to kind of minimize the pain of having different model version for different stakeholders. So as you know, so here I talk about the financial analysis from the sponsor's perspective. Sponsors, they build a model, first of all, for themselves to evaluate their own return and also to negotiate the different uh, contract be between the lenders to between the co-sponsors and also between the government or their contractor the EPC whether to understand the um, the, uh, the the different contracts is in their benefits or not so these are the things that they use the model for all right and sometimes they need to uh, send the model to different stakeholders for example when they are sending the package to the lenders to present their project and to ask ask for funding they also need to send this financial model which is basically the future projections and the bankability of the project is reflected in that model 
So however, it's extremely difficult to maintain different financial models, you know, that reflects the different perspective. Just to tell you, uh, I will just tell you a true story based on my own experience. When I joined the African Development Bank back in 2013, uh, I was assigned to a project and um, the project was at very kind of uh, late stage. It was almost about to close. However, they needed to kind of set up a mechanism, a revenue mechanism that required some probability analysis on Monte Carlo simulation done on the model. There was already an existing model at the time and the model was a, it was a good model but it it was a bit um, it had different blocks of calculation that was being copy and pasted copy and pasted so it was taking you know long to run the model and if we wanted to run the Monte Carlo simulation together with that copy and paste it was almost impossible. So at that stage, lenders decided to have their own version of the financial model. And I was at the lender side at the time. So I built a financial model for that project, but it was an extremely painful and difficult process to keep, you know, these two models aligned. So every time there was something new in the project, the sponsors were sending us the model. Us as the lenders, we had to kind of make sure that our projections are in line with the sponsor's model and then run our simulations on our own, own version of the model. So I, dis I realized that that process was very painful and from then on, I always made sure that, you know, to have models or if I was building them mod models, build models that could accommodate different perspective so that we don't have to deal with the different uh, models. I'm not talking about the model versions. I'm just talking about the different financial models with the complete different, different structures. So as you can see, what I am suggesting is to have, like I think it's also done um, by other people as well, is to have a master file, which we call, which I call the master financial model, and then from that master financial model, you can just, um, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, have different version of that same model. You you create a sponsor version, you create a lender version, government version, whatever version you want. But you have a base, uh, a master file which you call the master financial model, and then you come up with the techniques that I would tell you uh, now. Uh, the kind of very simple techniques that you can just have and implement in your models to kind of convert any model to the to lenders version, sponsor version, the government version, whatever version you want. So the first technique, first solution that I propose is to have to always um, kind of um, present your inputs in form of scenario analysis. Okay, so I will show you in the Excel uh, later in the video, but here I just want to show you that, for example, as you can see here in this, um, in this uh, model, we have different sheets. We have calculation sheets, output sheets, and input sheets. So the input sheets is presented in form of scenario analysis. As you can see in that screenshot, we have a switch there that, you know, that enables you to switch in between different scenarios. And in, the, in those columns, you can present different points of view. For example, in this case, column J, you just say the base case, you can call it sponsor base case and reflect the world from the sponsor's point of view. And then you can have the column K and then you present it as the lender's point of view. And when you are in negotiation with the lenders, you, you can have both of them at the same time and then negotiate you know, different parameters and see what are the differences. For example, contingency sometimes is different. The, the, sometimes lenders are known to be more conservative. So some of the parameters might be different. So in this way, you can have one column next to the sponsor column and have these differences reflected in this one single model. And then the user can just switch in between these two scenarios by just, you know, using a simple switch. So that's going to be instead of saving the file under the different version, you can have one single file, but having these two uh, point of view reflected in that one single model. So the first one is to have uh, to present your inputs in form of scenarios. The second one is like always there are some calculations, there are some information that different stakeholders, they don't want to share with, the, with, the, with, with each other. That's not because they are hiding anything or there is something that, you know, because 
project finance deals, you know, especially if they are done, you know, in the standard international way, it's always transparent. You know, you always share everything. You share all your contracts, you share all the information. So everybody is aware of everything. So there is nothing that you can hide. You know, it's not about that. But there are some calculations that is not of interest of other parties. You know, for example, or shareholders within themselves there might be some deals there might be some loan that one shareholder is giving to another shareholder so it so they might want to do this calculation of their their return from their own perspective the things that are uh, of concerns of the sponsors themselves so they want to do some side calculation uh, that still you know needs the model results However, they don't want to kind of send it, send those details to the lenders. So what is common to do is to attach what I call a hybrid uh, worksheet. Hybrid because, you know, one of the standards in financial modeling is to separate inputs from outputs. OK, it doesn't mean that you always have to have a single worksheet that you call input doesn't mean that you know you can as I always say, you can have a one uh, what, what they call a um, uh, a one pager model so you can have a complete a whole financial model built in one single worksheet actually that was what i used to do before in my previous life you know we used to always do one pager model so you had the inputs at the beginning in one section in one sheet and then you did the calculation and then you had the results and then you had your charts everything done in one single sheet that's okay that's not a problem as long as you kind of separate the inputs from the calculations and you respect all the financial modeling standards, you can do it within one single worksheet. So in this model, for example, in this example that I'm showing you here on this slide, I have a, what we call a modular uh, model, meaning that, you know, there are different sheets that contains different calculations. So with this sheet, I insert another worksheet, which for myself, I color coded differently. For example, this is done for a company Phoenix mode. So I put the, the name Phoenix mode, you can call it internal, you can call it whatever to reflect what you are basically uh, what this worksheet is containing. So here I want to do all the calculation related to the return for this company Phoenix mode. OK, so I color coded differently. So I know that this sheet is an internal sheet. It contains some inputs, uh, you know, in the in the one page Phoenix mode. It contains the inputs on top. Then it does the calculation and then the results. So I will show you now when we go to the Excel. So well, why do I call this hybrid? It's not a standalone sheet. So it doesn't mean that this can, you know, it's a one single sheet that is, it still has link to the model. So the dividends, the equity, all those calculations are still linked to the model. However, if I delete this sheet from the model, it's not going to make any difference. So all the other sheets are OK. They work properly. So this sheet in that sense is standalone, meaning that it is still linked. But if you delete it, it's not going to affect the model. So when you're sending the model to another, you know, to a third party, you can simply delete that single worksheet and you come up with a version that you can share with other people. So that's the second uh, technique that I propose here to having a one single model and uh, different and create different version of a one single master model. So what are the benefits of that? First of all, is um, this this is kind of a two step approach. First was to build your inputs in forth of scenarios. Second is whatever you don't want to share with another person, with another party, you just put it in another sheet that you can delete and then send it out. So it's kind of like a two step approach which is going to make your life easier. It's going to it's going to reduce the cost, the modeling cost, because keeping, as we said, keeping two models at the same time is just a nightmare. And it's also going to reduce errors because two models, you know, maintaining two, it's a headache and it might cause some difficulty and errors. So it's going to also reduce errors. And I think the most important one is going to bring everyone involved in one single framework. That's, I think, it's like another language. You know, everybody is speaking the same language. Everybody is speaking the, to the same sheet, to the same rows. And that, I think, it's kind of a benefit, very a benefit of having a one single model so that everybody understands each other. So the, the model that you send to the government, the lenders, they have received almost the same. It may, might be the differences between the two of them, but the framework is the same. So when they talk to each other, they understand and they can refer to the same worksheet. Same thing with the sponsor. 
sponsors, sponsors as well. So all the entities, they come together and they speak one language. They are under one single framework. And I think that's very beneficial. All right, so this was all the blah, blah, blah that I wanted to cover. Now I want to show you the, uh, I want to take you into the financial model and we do some, I show you the framework under Excel. Okay, now we are back this time in the Excel world. So what I want to show you here today is the technique number one, which was to present inputs in form of scenarios. In this worksheet, as you can see, it's an input sheet. So instead of, um, you know, it, the, the inputs are, are still presented and separated by type. So here we have input sheets, uh, timing inputs, cap, cap, uh, capital cost inputs and everything. However, uh, as you can see, we have these different columns. So each column represents one perspective. So for example, in this example, column K represent the sponsor base case. Column L represent the lender base case. So the user can navigate in between the two by just using this switch here on top, which can just switch between sponsor case and the lender's case. And you can import these, um, uh, you can uh, basically import it to anywhere else in the model as well, right? This uh, switch and use it to kind of interactively see the impact on the ratios and on the results. So the only thing that you need to do is to present these kind of uh, columns and have one column that you call it for live case. So this is just using an index function. So this index function refer to the single parameter, which uh, shows which, which one you want to select, which of these scenarios you want to select for each of the inputs. And then that's it. So index function and the columns, you have this worksheet. Uh, which is uh, representing inputs in form of scenarios. Uh, the second technique that we talked about was to present that to present the information that you want to, you don't want to share with uh, other parties, other stakeholders. You you kind of put it in a hybrid model, in a hybrid worksheet, meaning that you put any um, inputs, you put it there on top, you actually color code it so that the user still knows that these are inputs and then you do your calculation for example in this model i have this worksheet i call phoenix mode which is for this company phoenix mode so i show that there are different stakeholders each stakeholder has a shareholding in the company and it maybe there is a loan from one uh, shareholder to another there are also some depending on the where the company is situated, there might, might be different tax implications. So for example, stakeholder one and two, they have a tap, uh, capital gain tax of 25%. The third one, there is local one or whatever, it doesn't pay any taxes. Uh, same thing for the withholding tax on dividends. So there might be different, you know, tax um, implication for different stakeholder. So you want to do these different set of calculations separately from the version that you send to the government or to the lenders because it's not of their interest, right? So you still do an IRR calculation, an all-in combined calculation when you send it to the lenders because, of course, lenders want to also make sure that the project is financially viable from the sponsor's perspective because, remember, in a project finance deal or any deal, it should be win-win for everyone. If not, it's not going to work. So it's going to be a problem and you're going to have to renegotiate the contract. So everybody needs to win in the base case. And in down cases, then we're going to see who's going to kind of, who's um, who's going to be hit by a risk parameter and who can ba basically handle any risk. But uh, when it comes to the base case, everybody should benefit. So the purpose here is to just do these individual calculations, which have nothing to do with the rest of the model. So basically, for example, if you want to send this to a, to a lender, the only thing you need to do is to basically remove this one, delete this sheet, you know, yes, you permanently delete it. It's not going to impact anything. As you can see, everything is fine. All the model is working properly. And if you want to, you can also, if you want to delete this scenario, you can, but I don't see any point of deleting that because the parameters are there and you're when you're negotiating everybody is aware of you know your point of view and it's completely understandable to have different points of views depending on the, the riskiness of the project or how you can handle risk so that's completely fine but however if you don't want to kind of show your point of view or any someone's point of view you can also delete simply delete this column save it under another name and send it to the party that you want to send it to 
All right, so that's all about this um, one single model approach that uh, I wanted to show you here. I hope you find it useful. If you like it, just let me know. If you have any question, let me know. And uh, see you next time. <laughs>